that a businessman in the community had agreed to take the money and buy the books and donate them to the school. That time I didn't know who it was. But at the trial, Buckingham admitted he had given that check to Alan Bonsell and that the unknown businessman who bought the books had been Alan Bonsell's father. This contradicted statements Bill Buckingham and Alan Bonsell had originally made in their sworn depositions. Lying under oath is a serious crime. We impeached the president about it. And people go to jail for it all the time. And it seemed to us that there was testimony that demonstrated clear inconsistency. I can't see into their hearts and know, you know the extent of the falsehood, but I do know that we asked questions that should have elicited that information and they, they didn't provide that information. It was almost like this weird feeling that, you know, when you've watched a nature show and you know that the gazelle's about to get it from the lion, you know, I remember actually thinking, oh God, Judge Jones is going to kill Alan Bonsall. I don't, I can't look. And then Judge Jones, his face had gotten bright red at this point, and he goes, you tell me why you didn't say where that money came from to buy of pandas and people. And Alan Bonsall finally, under Judge Jones's grilling, started to get a little nervous, and he started flapping his hands, and he started stammering, and he completely had lost this self-assured composure that he had earlier. And uh, finally, he just said, well, I misspoke. Never in a million years did I ever think that we'd, you know, I'd be in a federal lawsuit when I was on the school board or had the school district in something like that over a one-minute statement, a one-minute statement. We weren't asking the teachers to become uh, priests or um, Protestant pastors of some sort or lay ministers or anything like that. Just let the kids know the theories there. Let the kids do their own research and find answers for themselves. After six weeks, the trial concluded with closing arguments that were as divided as the town of Dover itself had become. What am I supposed to tolerate? A small encroachment on my First Amendment rights? Well, I'm not going to. I think this is clear what these people have done, and it outrages me. That's a statement of one citizen of Dover, Fred Callahan, standing up to the wedge that has been driven into his community and his daughter's high school by the Dover School Board's anti-evolution, pro-intelligent design policy. This trial has established that intelligent design is unconstitutional because it is an inherently religious proposition, a modern form of creationism, it is not just a product of religious people. It does not just have religious implications. It is, in its essence, religious. The shell game has to stop. In sum, Your Honor, I respectfully submit that the evidence of record shows that the plaintiffs have failed to prove that the primary purpose or primary effect of the reading of a four paragraph statement on intelligent design explaining that it's an explanation for the origins of life different from Darwin's theory letting the students know there are books in the library on this subject does not by any reasonable measure threaten the harm which the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment to the United States Constitution prohibits. But instead, the evidence shows that the defendant's policy has the primary purpose and primary effect of advancing science education by making the students aware of a new scientific theory, one which may well open a fascinating prospect to a new scientific paradigm. Judge Jones said he would return a verdict promptly. Four days after the trial ended, Dover residents rendered their own verdict on intelligent design with a huge turnout for the school board election. 
By a narrow margin, the people of Dover cleaned house. All eight of the nine seats up for election went to anti-intelligent design candidates, including plaintiff and former Dover science teacher Brian Ream. Among the candidates who got the fewest votes was Alan Bonsell. With the judge still deliberating, Dover's local school board election was national news and even provoked the ire of televangelist Pat Robertson. I'd like to say to the good citizens of Dover, uh, if there is a disaster in your area, don't turn to God. You just rejected him from your city. Though Robertson had already passed judgment, Dover and the nation would have to wait another month for Judge Jones to render his verdict. On December 20th, 2005, Jones sent out his opinion by email. I went to work that day. We pretty much knew it was going to be out by noon. Um, so I waited at work for a phone call. The decision came across the computer. I think it was 1037. The columnist behind me, I was reading it from the beginning, and he's standing over my shoulder, and he yells at me, go to the end, go to the end. I remember Mrs. Spar, Bertha Spar, knocking on my door and interrupting my class. The 139-page opinion ruled that intelligent design is not science. Finding it had been introduced for religious reasons, Judge Jones decided it was unconstitutional to teach intelligent design in Dover science classes. Both defendants and many of the leading proponents of intelligent design make a bedrock assumption which is utterly false. Their presupposition is that evolutionary theory is antithetical to a belief in the existence of a supreme being and to religion in general. To be sure, Darwin's theory of evolution is imperfect. However, the fact that a scientific theory cannot yet render an explanation on every point should not be used as a pretext to thrust an untestable alternative hypothesis grounded in religion into the science classroom or to misrepresent well-established scientific propositions. The citizens of the Dover area were poorly served by the members of the board who voted for the intelligent design policy. Citing what he called the breathtaking inanity of the school board's decision, he found that several members had lied to cover their tracks and disguise the real purpose behind the intelligent design policy. The crushing weight of the evidence indicates that the board set out to get creationism into science classrooms and uh, intelligent design was simply the vehicle that they utilized to do that. Jones recommended to the U.S. attorney that he investigate bringing perjury charges against Buckingham and Bonsell for lying under oath. And the overwhelming evidence at trial, he said, established that intelligent design is a religious view, a mere relabeling of creationism, and not a scientific theory. In an era where we're trying to cure cancer, uh, where we're trying to prevent pandemics, where we're trying to keep uh, science and math education on the cutting edge in the United States, to introduce and teach bad science to ninth grade students makes very little sense to me. You know, garbage in, garbage out, and it doesn't benefit any of us who benefit daily from scientific discoveries. The school district was permanently forbidden to teach intelligent design in its science curriculum. The administration was ordered to pay the plaintiff's legal fees, totaling more than a million dollars. And the election of a new school board opposed to intelligent design meant no appeal of the ruling would be mounted. In the wake of the trial, Time magazine named Judge Jones one of the 100 most influential people of the year. But not everyone was so pleased with the judge's decision. To put it bluntly, I think he's a jackass. I think he went to clown college instead of law school, or else he went to law school and slept during the Constitution classes, because uh, his decision doesn't jive with the law.